Our Border Patrol agents should not be in those type of conditions where they are at risk of being blown to pieces by the cartels, who, by the way, are criminals, and, th and they should be treated as, a, as such. As a matter of fact, I've co-sponsored legislation to declare war on the cartels because they are definitely declaring war on us. After listening to all of this, I am so angry. I cannot believe the incredible failure of our federal government um, and, and to the American people. And, and also to the Border Patrol agents, ICE agents, the jobs that they do and how incredibly difficult their jobs are based on the failed policies that they are forced to operate under. It is absurd. I live in Georgia. My state is not a border state. But let me inform you of some of the things that we're, we're dealing with. Here in, my, in Georgia, fentanyl-involved deaths has increased by over 230% since Biden has taken office. In my district alone, we, we have had fentanyl-involved deaths increase by over 350%. I can tell you right now, the policies do not work. And we are sick and tired of our young people dying, our, our uh, emergency responders getting poisoned by fentanyl. This, this is unacceptable. Chief Ortiz, are you aware that there was an explosive device found by Border Patrol agents on January 17th in an area called No Man's Land? And there's surveillance of who put it there. And guess what? It wasn't Americans. It was cartels. Are you aware of that? Thank you, Congresswoman, and, and good to see you again. I will tell you that uh, some of this information that uh, I receive, I receive in a, a, a confidential uh, skiff, so I'm going to be a little hesitant of briefing what I know and what I don't know with respect to some of those, an event like that. I understand, Chief Ortiz, but I'm not going to be confidential because I think people deserve to know. Our Border Patrol agents should not be in those type of conditions where they are at risk of being blown to pieces by the cartels, who, by the way, are criminals, and, th and they should be treated as, a, as such. As a matter of fact, I've co-sponsored legislation to declare war on the cartels because they are definitely declaring war on us, the American people and our Border Patrol agents, and I've had enough of it and I know Americans have had enough of it. Uh, Mr. Kagan, are you aware of such explosive device uh, being found by Border Patrol agents? I am not. Uh, Mr. Kagan, since you have to deal greatly in all the horrific drugs that are poisoning Americans every day, um, let's talk about kids for, for a little bit. Um, we were just told this morning that kids aged 13 to 17 are being recruited by the cartels, dangerous cartels, even MS-13, and they are being used to smuggle drugs, traffic drugs, into our country, uh, having it taped across their bodies. They're also recruited because many of them have U.S. citizenship uh, because, of the, because they've come in our country, and they're used to drive and smuggle humans and drugs back and, back and forth across our border. Order. Um, can you can you elaborate elaborate on that? Thank you, and good to see you as well. Mm -hmm. um, the cartels are very good, and transnational criminal organizations are very good at going after vulnerable populations. You see that with the immigrants that are coming up. You see that with as you're talking about kids. This is something that has gone on for a long time. I worked in Mexico for four years. So here, seeing cartels, seeing TCOs go after vulnerable children and vulnerable populations is something that definitely happens. They will go after any vulnerable population in order to move their drugs north and or move their guns and profits south. Yes, so but yes, Mr. Kagan, let me interrupt you for a minute. This has been a large increase in just the past two years and how many teenagers and even children are being used to traffic drugs. The increase is there and it's showing that the policies are failing. I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't catch the question. I said Apologize. there's been a large increase in, in children being used trafficking drugs uh, into our country and being recruited by gangs. And it's just happened in the past few years and the policies are failing. So what change needs to be made? I don't have data on the, the increase, the increase in children being used. I, my time that I'm speaking about goes all the way back into 2007 to 2010, 
when I was in New Mexico. So I, I don't have any comment on the on increase or decrease. So I, that's not as an investigative arm of DHS. I'm not here to to focus on. Well, I can tell you right now. I have the I have the statistics. Deaths of 350 percent in the past two years in my district from fentanyl. That's proof that the increase is there, and and we are devastated. There, sorry, it. I didn't mean to be disingenuous. Mm -hmm. There is definitely increase in fentanyl coming here. There's definitely we all have seen the increase in death in children. I was just on a panel a few months ago, sitting next to mm -hmm. three parents who had lost their children. It's the hardest time that I've ever had to testify in my entire life. Then I think, you know what I think, you guys, and I'm going to be really honest with everyone, um, I, I could care less about politics at this point. All I care about is policies put in place that allow our great men and women to do their job to secure our country. And our country is not safe. And our people are being poisoned by fentanyl every single day. I cannot believe it's the number one cause of death of people from ages 18 to 45. That is unacceptable. And I think that we need to all be honest and who cares about who our boss is and who cares about who's in office. We need to be honest and forthcoming about the changes that need to be made to secure our country because America is all of our home. Now, it doesn't matter about Republican, Democrat, or who cares. It's everybody's home. And what I would like to see done is real frank uh, conversation about what to do to fix this problem.